Hey guys, we're gonna do homework five two. Okay, so we found centers two ways. We either found the circumcenter or we found the incenter, right? And we did this by either um, doing perpendicular bisectors or angle bisectors. So now let's take a look at the homework problems. So here's our homework problems. We've got to do question 15, 18 through 20, and 24 through 27. So let's take a look. All right, so I've highlighted these. Question number 15 says perpendicular bisectors. Okay, so perpendicular bisectors create circumcenters. And we found out today that that means the circle would go on the outside. So if this is the circumcenter, then this circle would go on this outside and would touch and do a wonderful job at that. But it would touch J, K, and L. Yeah, on the outside. So it's saying the perpendicular bisectors of triangle JKL are PT. All right, so this is perpendicular bisector, and it cut JL in half. Uh, R was the midpoint of LK, and this is the perpendicular bisector, right? So each of those are the perpendicular bisectors. And it says, name the three isosceles triangles. So as we look at this, I'm hoping you're noticing three isosceles triangles. Here's an isosceles triangle, right? Because we know these two sides are congruent, right? Because they would be radiuses, or also known as radii. We know that the radius of a circle, all the radiuses of a circle are equal. So the yellow one is an isosceles triangle, this blue one would be an isosceles triangle, and then this purple one would be an isosceles triangle. Kind of hard to shade that in. Okay, so I'm gonna name those. Uh, name the three isosceles triangles. So that would be triangle JTK is the purple one, triangle LTK is the yellow one, and triangle JTL is the blue one. Nice work. Now let's take a look at number 18. It says, well, hold on a second. It says for questions 16 through 18, points D, E, and F are the midpoints of the side. So D, E, and F are the midpoints. So it looks like they have some perpendicular bisectors coming off of there. So that means point T, we know point T is the point of concurrency, also known as the circumcenter. Okay, and so we also notice that it looks like A, C, and B, those angles were cut in half. And so this point P must be, was made from the angle bisectors. So we know that point of concurrency is called the incenter. Okay, so now looking at our question, it says the perpendicular bisector of AB is M. So this is what they're calling line M. And the perpendicular bisector of BC is N. So the perpendicular bisector of BC is N. Okay, so the blue line and the red line that's N. And they intersect at T. So what do we know? Well, we know the circumcenter would create a circle on the outside. Um, so it says if TA, so this is exactly what we were talking about here, that if I made a circle from T, the center is T, it would uh, touch C, B, and A, right? it would touch C, B, and A, and this is the center of this circle. So that means this radius would be equal to this radius, would be equal to this radius, because it is the center of the circle. So it's saying, well, what if T, A is 8.2? So if T, A is 8.2, okay. What is T, C? Well, T, C would also have to be 8.2. So. T is the point where it is actually the same distance from all the points of the triangle ABC. So 
TA is 8.3. TA is a radius. It's 8.2, excuse me. TC is a radius. That would be 8.2. And TB is a radius, that would be 8.2. They happen to be asking, what's TC? Nice. Okay, number 18, they gave us a new picture. It says, find the value of EG. So let's take a look. It looks like EG, um, G is the intersection of this angle bisector and this angle bisector. So G would be the point G is the point of concurrency in center, right? So that means a circle could fit inside. So whoop, a circle would fit inside, meaning that this distance, 9, would be equal to this distance 9 and this distance 9. Each of those would be 9 um, because they're all radiuses of a circle that fits inside the circle from the in center. So um, EG is one of those, so EG would be 9. Now let's take a look at GF. Well, well the same thing. GF would also be 9. All right. Um, so we did 15 and 18 through 20. So they also wanted us to do 24 to 27. So let's take a look. 24 states, what is the area of the patio not covered, not covered by the sunshade? Okay, round to the nearest tenth. Explain how you found your answer. Okay, so the area of the patio, and we got it. This is a, an elaborate question here. So this is my patio, right? And so it definitely looks like the sunshade is not covering the whole patio. So I think here in my planning stage, I need to start with my whole patio. What is the area of my whole patio? And then I want to take away this area, the area of my sunshade. And this should leave me these leftover pieces. And that's what they want to know. They actually want to know what's the area of the uncovered patio, the area of the stuff that is not shaded. Okay, so here's my kind of generic or general formula. And let's uh, break this into pieces. So it, the whole area of a circle, well, if I Google that, the area of a circle is pi r squared. Okay, so if I look at this, I need to know this distance. Here. I'm not sure I know that distance. Just doing a little thinking here. I need this distance to find the area. Well, let's see if we can find the area of our sunshade. Um, so if I think about the area of my sunshade, it would be base times the area of just a triangle, right? And it is a triangle. The area of a triangle is one half base times altitude. Okay, so here's my altitude and here's my base. Let's see if I have either one of these. It looks like I have that, so that, that part I'm good. So this is my altitude. My altitude is 2.5. My base is 2.7 and another 2.7. Okay, so I can find the area of my sunshade. It's like, I guess this whole base would be those added together, so 5.4. So the area of the sunshade is the area of a triangle, and so that it would be 1 half times 5.4 times 2.5. 
Okay, so let's find the area of our sunshade. Okay, I type this in, I get that. Okay, now I have to find the area of my whole circle. Hmm. I'm not sure. I think maybe at this point, I could just perhaps use this distance as, as my circle. But that, that seems a little off. So maybe I'm missing something here, but okay. So the area of my circle, I need a radius, right? So I could also do this by approximating. Maybe, maybe another one of my students will figure this out. I mean, okay, so I need this distance. Um, and it looks like this distance is two. Oh, maybe I can get that from right here. Yeah, this distance is 2.4. This distance is 1.8. Yeah, so I can actually solve for C there and get my radius. Okay, cool. Wow. Okay, so you can Pythagorean theorem. I can do that. So I get, call that A minus B. A squared plus B squared is C squared. So 1.8 squared, 2.4 squared, and then I can solve for C squared. Hmm, that's interesting. So if I get the square root, I get three. Okay, so that's three. So my radius is three, so that's fine. So pi three squared. So that'd be nine times pi or nine times 3.14. I get 28.274. Okay, so it says round to the nearest tenth. So I've got this decimal minus this decimal and we're about to find our answer. Let's do it. Okay, so minus 6.75, we get 21.5 meters squared. Wow, what a cool question. Okay, 25, makes sense and perseveres. So it says a ball manufacturer wants to stack three balls each with an eight inch, eight centimeter diameter, okay? So that's all the way across. The diameter is eight, which would mean the radius would be four. And it wants to put it inside of a box, okay? That's an equilateral triangular prism. The di diagram shows the dimensions of the base. Will the ball fit? Okay, so our ball would fit right there. And so we need this to be no bigger than four. So that's what we're really trying to figure out. Is that distance any bigger than four? Because if it is, our ball won't fit. Okay, so let's take a look. It's, and I'm zooming in on this triangle, I guess. So I'm just gonna kind of flip that triangle over. So I'm trying to solve for this. I'll call that A, right? And it looks like I know this is 7.8, and I know this hypotenuse is 9. So I can solve for A. I'll call that B and that C. So A squared, I don't know. B squared is 7.8 squared. C squared is 9 squared. Okay, looking pretty good so far. Okay, so I've just got to take my square root to both sides and A is, uh-oh, so 4.8, 4 4.9. 4 so my answer is no. ball won't fit because 4.49 is greater than 4. And that, wait, 
wait a minute. If it's greater than four, maybe, no, I, I changed my mind here. If the box is 4.4, then it would fit. So if I think about it, and I think about my ball again, my ball is only 4.4. Four. It, it, it is four, leaving me an extra 0.49. Yes, it will fit. I have 0.49 of extra space. Mm, cool. Okay, last two. ABC is so in a triangle, ABC. AB has a midpoint M, and L is the perpendicular bisector. Okay, so let's just take a, trace a corner. That's my perpendicular bisector, L. Call that L. Um, the perpendicular bisector of AB. And the angle bisector of AC. A... So it is also the angle bisector of ACB. Interesting. So I've kind of shown you in my picture that my picture is not meeting the description. So how could I draw this a little bit more accurately? I'm actually thinking this must be an isosceles triangle. If, meaning I, I need to draw these two the same, because if this is in fact the middle and that's the perpendicular bisector, then if I'm intending to cut this angle in half, this angle over here at C, then I'm gonna have to have um, those two sides to be equal. And I, my first picture, I didn't draw it that way. Okay, so let's state all the ones, all the statements that are true about this picture. So this is my non-example. Uh, this is my example. Okay, so in the second picture, is it true that the radius of the inscribed circle ABC is AM? The radius of the inscribed circle. So let's per put a circle inside. The radius would not be AM, no. Would AC be equal to CB? AC would be equal to CB. Yeah, that's what I was saying, this, this, yes, this is isosceles triangle. Would both the circumcenter and the incenter be on L? Yeah, because it's isosceles. So that's a big yes. Would the circumcenter be inside? Yes, I think the circumcenter would also be inside. As we look at this triangle, the circumcenter would be inside. However, couldn't I also make an obtuse triangle? And so we know if it's an obtuse triangle, this perpendicular bisector you know, would cut this in half and it would also cut this angle in half. But we know in an obtuse triangle, the circumcenter is not inside. So I got to put not always, and I'm not going to check that one. And then the last one, would the radius of the circumscribed circle be AM? Would the radius be AM? I'm going to say no. Okay. Last one. Circle O intersects AB only at F. So circle O... Here's my circle. Intersects AB only at F. All right. BC only at G. and AC only at H. What equation is true? So what they're saying is there's F, well side AB must be out here somewhere. Make sense? And then here's G. BC must be somewhere out here. 
right? Because it intersects it only at G. And then, I guess I gotta make A longer. And you gotta make C a little bit longer. And then AC, AC only at H. So what do we know is true? Well, th what this all means is that this circle fits inside, doesn't it? That circle has to fit perfectly inside because it only touches the perimeter of the circle at that point. So this is B. My point of concurrency has to be my in center. Okay, so let's take a look. It says, would AC have to equal AH? Would AH have to equal AC? I'm not sure. Possibly. Would OF be O O, this is circle O, so O F, B have to be 90? Yes. Would O, B have to be equal to O, C? Would O, B have to be equal to O, C? Well, no, my picture looks fine and those aren't equal. Would O, F have to equal O, C? No, those are different distances, but I drew a picture that met this requirement. Would angle B, a O B A O have to match A B O. No, those those angles don't equal each other. So I think we've definitely found our answer. Thanks for joining us, guys.